<laughs> All right. Looks like we've stabled out. So maybe we can get Biomutant to work properly. So we need to go to... Lecture hall. So we need to go to the lecture hall. We'll do Biomutant another day and find out. I don't feel like turning it back on right now. We're doing something right. We're doing this at the last game right now. But I'm hoping that's what happened with Biomutant, though I can't be sure. I am going to update my drivers when I'm done. The plaque says it's the door to the science lab, but it's locked. The door has been unlocked. How did you? I could have sworn I locked that door. You'll regret opening it. There's something very wrong about this man. Look what he did to that guard. Get him before he does the same to us. Okay. Oh no, he's gone insane. Trauma acquired. Self-mutilation. You're the one to blame. You deserve to be punished. You'll do it yourself. Low chance of losing health every step. Suffering trauma. Once an investigator's sanity reaches zero, a trauma will be inflicted on him or her. Your investigator can be affected by up to three different traumas simultaneously. The fourth trauma will upgrade an existing trauma. If your investigator accumulates too many traumas too quickly, it can change the course of events. These traumas can be purged by leaving the investigator at the office between scenarios. Oh my god. Go for it. That's fine. Ooh, that's not. That's right, wrench in the face. <laughs> Don't hit my man.
Oh, you healing mother... <sighs> He's gonna be annoying. Okay, we have a gun. Gun solve all issues. Why aren't you dead yet? Boom! Stop you from being able to do anything. Good evening. Ooh. Well, it's not who I was hoping you'd shoot, I'm gonna be honest with you. Got him. That leaves one problem out of the way. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> These guys are having a good day. All right, now to smack them with a wrench. To die, old lady hits you with a wrench. What just happened? That man cast a spell. Oh, I know how that sounds, but you saw it with your own eyes. Something Wilhelmina researched proved dangerous, fatally so for her. <laughs> Nothing like a wrench to the face, right? A strange man lies dead on the floor. The prospect of rifling through his pockets is more than a little gruesome, but it's the only way to find a clue. On a scrap of... Great. On a scrap of paper, in his pocket, you find a list of locations. Professor Tillinghast Mansion, Miskatonic University, the Asylum, and something called a Witch House. Oh. You feel the stability of your mind. Shatter. That's not good at all, honestly. There is something held between the pages of this old tome. You find filthy bandages. A class notes on this chalkboard are partially erased, as if someone had begun to clear the board before noticing the erroneous do not erase notice. Somebody's in trouble. Desk. Scattered pages and notebooks litter the area. It might be tedious to search it all, but doing so might turn up an overlooked clue. Many of the jumbled notes mention the imminent passage of a comet Professor Tillinghast appeared to be studying. Um, what was Tillinghast actually studying? Well, that exists. What is this thing? Is it even alive? I've never seen anything like it. No matter its origin, you must admit it is a scientifically important discovery. That container looks the same as the broken glass we found at Professor Tillinghast's house. 
Do you suppose someone took one there? Maybe. Strange creature. A weird worm-like creature with strange tentacle-like growths lies on an operating table. It appears dead or dormant. Something about its strange appearance strikes revulsion in your heart. This thing is an abomination. Rather than let the students find it, you decide to burn it. We can't just leave this thing behind. We have to destroy the body. Burn it. You can't know how this creature's flesh will react to flame. Don't take the risk. Uh, what was that? Thank you. King, King Slenderer. Slenderer? I'm so sorry, I think I said your name wrong. You're right. We can't let anyone else get a hold of this thing. Complete. Professor Tillingham spent most... Uh, spent at least much time at Miskatonic University as she did at her own home. There's no better place to start investigating. Uh, we did miss something that I was trying to find, but okay. The gravekeeper Albert Hatcher is the only one who saw how my body left the cemetery. And whatever it was broke his sanity. Questioning a madman might not be easy, but it's the only lead you have. Investigators can overcome one trauma every time he or she doesn't participate in the scenario. Choose carefully who you choose to bring with you and who you don't. I'm not taking him with me. Whoop. The grave... Are you sure you want to use these investigators? Yes. Professor Tillingham's body has disappeared from the cemetery. On the same night, the gravekeeper, Albert Hatcher, went mad and was transported into Arkham Asylum. If you wish to know what happened that night, questioning him seems to be the logical course. Take that. Take that. Let's see. Won't leave us much room, but that's going to be very useful. Okay, launch scenario. Let's do this, everyone. So it looks like we may be making our way to Arkham. What happened to this poor fellow, Albert Hatcher? What did he see to make him lose his mind utterly? Surely losing a corpse he had buried is a black mark on his record. But something much worse must have happened. You must question the man at Arkham Asylum. That place has a sinister reputation. The longer he remains there, the less chance his mind will ever recover. Mental disease is the worst fate I can imagine. Thankfully, it isn't infectious. Is it? I didn't expect the Grand Plaza, but this asylum is a real dump. Let's ask someone where to find this gravekeeper, Albert Hatcher. Okay. So welcome to Arkham Asylum, everyone. That name might seem familiar to you. The newspaper article, Article in Arkham Advisor, Black Magic in Arkham by Rex Murphy. Local woman, Miss... Claims her neighbor uses a vo uses a voodoo in dispute over cat's use of a flower's bed as its litter box. Soon after the argument's over, a common parcel of land between their houses reached a window rattling crescendo. According to the witness, 
the neighbor in question threatened to buy a voodoo doll to secure his revenge. Soon after, Miss reported experiencing piercing back pain, preventing her from working in the flower garden she had planted between the houses. While some might dismiss the, mal the malady as the result of gardening labor or mere coincidence, this reporter, having seen the pin-like marks on Miss Bat, believes there is more than meets the eye to this breaking story. Rest assured, the advisor at advers ad advertisery will follow this story wherever it leads. That's right, this isn't the Batman one. Arkham Asylum originally came from Lovecraft. Map of the Asylum. On the billboard, a map of the asylum indicates men's wing to the right a woman's to the left. Each floor compromises a different ward. Isolation on the first, recreation on the second. The floors of varying severity of illness. At the top are the doctor's offices and in the basement is a boiler room. A note on the map indicates the boiler is out of order. Also, we have to be very careful. Here's a map of the asylum. Let's see where everything is. First floor, isolation ward. Second floor, recreation. The floors above are divided by different types of illness. The doctor's offices are at the top. Look at this note taped to the basement. There's a broken boiler down there. Okay. So the question is, where are the, where are the doctors? A number of file folders lie on the table. Perhaps what you seek is in one of them? Oh, thank God. Inside one folder, you find a note reading, Update on A. Hatcher, file indicating his transfer to the isolation ward. In another, you find a telegram dated yesterday. Heard of your patient, Hatcher? Stop. We are studying recent infectious outbreak in New Orleans. Stop. Hatcher shows similar symptoms. Stop. Request your transfer. Ha request you transfer Hatcher to us. It seems Albert Hatcher has been moved to the isolation ward. He was moved because of violent behavior. Perhaps it's best he remains in the asylum. Don't forget this telegram. According to the sender, others have shown symptoms like his. We should investigate. This problem goes beyond a single mad gravekeeper. Yes, there is going to be a very short something unlimited. Because I recorded a three-hour episode, and only 20 minutes of it was salvageable. Ah, uh, here's a thing if you're a developer. Give me a fucking ability to save on my own. The file cabinet doesn't appear to be locked, but the door won't open. It must be jammed. Shoot! Great Old Ones, Colt Hunt. The presence of the Great Old Ones attracts more followers. Now they're coming for you. A little applied mechanics is all it takes to open the container and see what's inside. Shoot. Oh, I didn't bring a knife. Shoot. This is going well for us. Stab a woman. I thought I had a knife. Oh, I didn't have it equipped, do I? If 
Fuck it. What are you gonna do? Oh, you cheap SOB! You cheap SOB. I'm not gonna let you get away with that. Move my short and shoot. That's not good for us. Please stop doing that to me. Dang it, where is my freaking knife? There we go. I have to make sure that she has that equipped. My revolver's ruined! Oh, I see how this goes. Oh, we are screwed right to the get-go. We need a knife badly. The guard babbles something about the recent clamor. Most of what he says makes no sense, but you catch something about a gunshot and a broken window. You feel the stability of your mind shatter. <sighs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Shards of glass glitter the pool of fresh blood. It appears someone shot someone shot through the door's window. Oh, this can only end well for us. Something's wrong here. Feels like my ears want to pop. You're right. I've felt pressure in my head since we walked in the door. Can we please stop with the sanity? A patient's file reads, O'Banion Danny, arrested during speakeasy raid. Despite witness identification, denied being Danny O'Bannon, initial assessment determined patient believed he was telling the truth. Note, assigned to isolation ward because a gang leader could un unduly influence other inmates. Ooh, yeah. I need more weapons. We are in a very bad spot right now. The Arkham Asylum has separate wings for men and women. This door leads to the women's ring. You won't find your suspect here. No, but I was hoping I could find a weapon. What's wrong with these inmates? They're insane. These inmates act as if they're possessed. They're insane. They're acting like wild animals. They're insane. Be careful what you say. That one heard you. I don't think he liked what you said. They're insane. Neither did his friends. They're coming straight at us. <laughs> Women are the weapon. Hmm. I don't have to waste my bullets, but we have nothing else. Go. No, it doesn't give the option for clean headshot. It is a lot of fun. I really like this game. 
But man, I went into this screwed. But I did that to myself. Speaking of screwed, we're about to have a really bad time, everyone. We are about to have such a bad time. You blinded me? Ooh! Stab me in the eye! Wow, that was just mean. No! Insanity. You feel? No, you hear. No, no, what is this? This is wrong. Your head's about to explode. Can I get a good sanity check at some point? Oh, we are fucked. Yeah, no, the blind guy is going to do this. We knew that was happening. We may have to restart this mission. I went in screwed. Oh, bad time. Bad time. Oh, no. No, my detective. No. When an investigator's health drops to zero during a fight, he or she will drop to the ground until the end of the fight, or until you use an M4M from item. If at least one member of the group survives the fight, all the knocked out investigators will stand up with, the, with a small part of their HP restored. Being knocked out will also trigger a sanity check for the affected. Okay, just kill me. Oh, now you do three damage. Shot him in the back of the head. He's fine. Oh. Fuck your sanity. One of you gets a shot in the head. How does that not do more damage? How does that not do more damage? How does that not do more damage? Son of a f fuck. Just kill me. Oh, you know you could feel that. You stepped on his body, too. Oh, good job there, lady. Good job. Everyone give her a hand. She's gonna die. This is sucks. Oh, this sucks. If I get out of this, it's gonna be a miracle. Oh, we're screwed. Is this called, uh, is this elder abuse or is this, uh, don't hit women? I can't tell which one this is supposed to be. You know what? Yeah. Two sanity checks!
two sanity checks. That was great. Bad time, Tim. We're leaving. Can I restart this mission? <laughs> Son of a... Nope. There we go. That's what I want to do. So that went well. And that's how you don't play Arkham. You can save in this what one. Happened to the oh no. You're no, 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 no. Return to office. Imagine. Your mental fortitude severely. The gravekeeper. Why were you surprised by that? Let's try this again without failure. That went exactly like everyone saw it going. What happened to this right poor back. fellow Albert Hatcher? What did he see to make him lose his mind utterly? Surely losing a corpse he had buried is a black mark on his record. But something much worse must have happened. You must question the man at Arkham Asylum. That place has a sinister reputation. The longer he remains there, the less chance his mind will ever recover. Mental disease is the worst fate I can imagine. Thankfully, it isn't infectious. Is it? I'm back. Oh, weapon! I'll be able to wrench them badly. I'm gonna I wrench didn't them expect so hard. It. Let's ask someone where to find this. All right, so let's do everything again. <laughs> this time without. Here's failure. a map. First, look at this. It seemed he was. Don't forget that we should invent. I know this is going to cause us an insanity thing. <laughs> Right. Let's try this without failure. Something's wrong here. Feels You're right. Oh. All right, we're going to hit a save. And yes, there is manual saving also for those that were wondering. I'm not talking about that game right now, dude. What's wrong with I've these inmates? Done it. These inmates act. They're actually. Be careful what you. Neither did his.
Nice. Ow. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two sanity checks. Stabby, stabby. Maim them. Ask and you shall receive. One down. Two more to go. Can't do anything yet. Would you stop smacking me in the face? I guess it's better than stabby. I think I aimed that a little badly, but I think we can still pull out. Nice. God, that wrench is useful. What are you gonna do? Hit me? Oh, I did aim a little bit off. You see, like, pinpoint. Oh, shit. It's done. Got him. Now I... I wonder if I can heal her. I think I have enough to heal her. There we go, I do. How come he can punch me for five, but I can't punch them for that much? It's some bull. home what's all this clamor did you attack that patient to be fair I attacked three patients and um, they were coming right for us I would like to use that as my legal defense we were just defending ourselves they attacked us they weren't acting normal I mean they were all acting the same kind of abnormal almost like they weren't in control of their actions while perhaps too simple for medical use, your diagnosis seems correct. I must concur. This is not the sort of behavior we've come to expect from these patients. Are you one of the asylum doctors? My name is Carolyn Fern. While I have admitting privileges, no, I am not on staff. What's going on here? I know little more than you. When I arrived to see Dr. Mintz, I noticed a strange pattern of behavior among the inmates. At first they appeared timid. But soon, even the meekest among them grew agitated, aggressive. Speaking of which, what are you doing here? We're friends of Professor Wilhelmina Tillingest, whose body was stolen the night Albert Hatcher had his breakdown. We want to ask Hatcher a few questions. I doubt he'll be coherent, but perhaps I can help. Besides, I want to understand the cause of this disturbance among the patients. Just promise me you'll be gentle with them. We could certainly use your help, and their safety in numbers. Let us hope that this new addition to your group will help discover what happened to the Gravekeeper. As well as to these poor unfortunate souls in the asylum. Carol Fern, new investigator. Dr. Carol Fern came to Arkham Asylum to examine the, an unusual patient. Even in her short time at the asylum, she has distinguished herself for a novel method of studying dreams through hypnosis. The rumor bill suggests that she has an ulterior motive for visiting the asylum, something to do with a former patient who died under unusual circumstances while in her care. Whatever the reason for her initial visit, she remains at Arkham out of concern for her patients, group therapy. Carol increases the probability of the group's weapons striking the enemy with a condition. Welcome. 
Don't get horny for the doctor, people. from this way. Okay, so she came from the front door. Never mind. A steel garbage bin filled with nasty conglomeration of medical and office waste. You shudder to imagine the damp globs you might find among crumpled paper and rubbish if you, if you were to search it. I should see how it feels. God damn it. Poking through the disturbing waste bin, you're rewarded by the discovering of a crumpled sheet of paper. Unfolding it, you read, I saw where they kept the damn thing. Such a little device. All they need to do is point it at us, and we have to calm down. They keep it in the safe in the doctor's office. You feel the stability of your mind shatter. It'll take time to look through all this, but it might be worth it. There are many, many supplies in the steel cabinet that only a careful search can determine whether there is something of interest inside. Ooh, smokes. That was good. Let's look around these cabinets first. Swear to God. Littered with bloody gauze and pools of unidentified bodily fluids, this operating table would give a health inspector a heart attack. Among the dirty, among the dirty operating tools scattered across the surface, you spot something useful. Let's see. Removes a random condition. Oh man, she needs a weapon. Shoot. She does not have any kind of weapon. That's good to know. Moving this around will turn up something. A plate and cult cutlery lie on the windowsill. The tableau forming a wistful scene. Whoever dined here must have gazed longingly outside. The piece of paper glued to the bottom of the plate reads 1 through 12. So we have several doors we can go through. Most give sanity, yeah, because it calms your brain. At least in this game. But it also takes help. Let's see. Like so many old tomes, this one has a lock securing the pages. A little applied mechanics is all it takes to open the container to see what's inside. There we go. Here is a bookcase in need of a tidy. After moving some of the books and objects, you notice something useful. Oh, I'm gonna use that. Aha! That, that was perfect. Thank you, game. The closed safe with a classic three number dial lock. Entering another number, you feel no reassuring click. You've got it wrong. The journal reads, patient remains incensed, incensed. He is not Danny O'Bannon. Despite witnesses and police identification, his manner and personality do seem at odds with the reputation of the notorious gang leader. Sometimes I almost believe him. The note reads, A young man visited to inquire about his missing father, Shane O'Brien. O'Brien, yeah, O'Brien. His description matches that of the patient, O'Banion. Surely this was a feeble ruse by one of the O'Banion gang to effect the release of their leader. If this young man returns, 
Call P Chief Nicholas at once. She's moonwalking. You're right, I didn't notice that until after I was done reading. Okay, no. So we want to come back here. I should carefully consider the titles of these books before proceeding. A bookcase in the in need of tidying. It might l take a little time, but you might find something useful. Move things around. You find an especially interesting book among the others. Book of incantation to harden the flesh. Ooh. Yeah, that goes to you because you don't have anything. So I can find you a knife. A large chest. Inside the chest you find a doctor's lab coat. It seems a strange place to leave one. Is there a doctor among the patients, or vice versa? Either possibility is troubling. I could use some chocolates. Gramophone. Ah, oh, dang it. A, Victor a Victrola phonograph skips constantly over the same worn track. The repetitive sound could drive one mad. Good thing you're already in an asylum. Ooh. Someone left a game of memory on the table. Although it's unfinished, you can tell by the arrangement of cards that the player was winning. There's hope for recovery. You take the opportunity to tickle the ivories. You come across a dead key. Lifting the lid to inspect the hammer and string, you make a surprising discovery. Okay, good, those can stack. That's gonna be useful. No advice. A scuffled and scattered wooden chest. Whew. A little applied mechanics and we gotta smoke. I love the animations in this. It's really, really nice. So that one wasn't too bad. So you want to go this way. The note reads, The orderlies confiscated another journal from pa patient O'Bannon. Let me emphasize that this patient should not be permitted access to writing materials. His writing only reinforces the delusion caused by his identity disorder. Should you find his writing, him writing again, have him transferred to my room downstairs. Dr. Mintz. Why do I feel like there's something he's hiding? So much blood. This man is beyond help. What could have savaged him so? What was that noise? It came from down the hall. Over there. Guess which way I'm not going. The patient is dead. But by himself, he couldn't possibly have done the source for so much blood. The trail leads down to the other end of the corridor, from which you hear the terrible noise. I ain't going over there. Well, now she has a weapon, at least. The door to the isolation ward cell is locked. I'm gonna save just in case. Because I have a bad feeling about this. How about you guys? The door to the isolation ward cell. Okay. Let's see. An infirmary bed stands in the corridor for the patients without a room. Soiled and tattered, it appears uncomfortable at best. 
I might need some evidence if I look through all this. A note in the patient's file, it reads, Patient A. Hatcher to be transferred to isolation ward due to violent behavior. Patient complains of stomach ache, although the injury to his abdomen region appears to be healing well. Wait, what? There was a da- Okay, so he was hurt. Let's see. Blood-stained scalpels and other filthy operating instruments cover this operating table. Searching it might reveal a useful item. You just hope you don't cut yourself. See, physical examination might reveal more. Bitch. I'm so glad that those things stack. A cabinet. A, fo a note in the cabinet. Albert Hatcher moved to Arkham in, 16 in 1916. Neighbors and colleagues describe him as a friendly, although he remains single and childless. He is unaffiliated with the, any local church or social organization. He occasionally invites friends to play poker at the cemetery when his duties allow. Initial assessment is of a healthy mind and body before the incident. This breakdown could not have been predicted. I don't like this. I'm gonna say right now. Right now we run into Batman. Sir, I don't like any of- Oh my god! What on earth is that... that thing? It can't be real. What is this strange creature? Some sort of natural mutation? Studying it could reveal heretofore unknown truths about the... Ah, uh, but perhaps now is not the time. It looks impossible, but part of it is... or was... human. I don't think he cares that he's facing a federal agent, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna shoot the shit out of this thing. Oh my god, look at its health. Check this book. All defenses are boost. Oh, thank God. It's some bullshit. Smack the shit out of it. Check me, book. He's having fun today. I'm gonna kill him. So glad I defensed up. Stun bullshit. You know what you're getting? Yeah, you know what you're getting. <laughs> Time to keep everybody's defense as high as possible. Son of a f fuck. 
You're getting stabbed in the face. Ooh! You got stabbed in the face, sir! Yeah, I'm waiting for him to heal, too. But that won't happen. I can't move the camera angle, sorry. Can hardly believe we beat that... thing. Yeah, having sharp objects and a blunt weapon seems to work well. And a magic book. It's skin as hard as steel. Apparently you can beat steel with a gun and a, and a crowbar. Or not a crowbar, a um, monkey wrench. Can barely stand to look at it. Makes me feel like I'm going mad. Be careful. I'm afraid that thing might still be alive. You have a heel, step on it. There must be some clue about where it came from in the asylum. Maybe we can find some way to get rid of it. Wait, do you hear that? Someone is sobbing in a nearby room. There, the operating room. We should see who it is. Why do I give two shits who it- do, do, Lady, do- Oh, I'm gonna do something stupid. Don't try this at home, kids. I just wanted to see what would happen. A humanoid creature with enormous tentacle growing out from its torso twitches on the floor. Something about this presence seems disturbing the asylum inmates. Guys, what could be disturbing the asylum inmates? Could it be the- thank you for the raid. Could it be the giant monster? Why would that disturb them? They said it was hard to steal, not fix steal. Newspaper article from the Arkham Gazette. Body vanishes, gravekeeper mad by Gerald, Gerard Wright. White fuck. The body of Professor Willing, Wilhelm Tillinghurst, late of Arkham University, has disappeared from its plot. Local police found gravekeeper Albert Hatcher in a deranged state at the site. Mr. Hatcher responded to inquiries only with cries of black goat. Oh, I know what this means. An unintelligible gibberish. Concerns for the gravekeeper's mental state caused authorities to transport him to Arkham Asylum under the care of Dr. Mintz. Thank you, Were, uh, Were, Were Wing. I hate your name and you know it. For the, uh, I hate, I hate the name just because it's so hard for me to say. For the raid. You know what? Take all my sanity. Take it all. The monster smashed the oaken desk to splinters. You shudder to imagine what such strength might do to a human body. Terrifying as the scene might be, pausing to look through the wreckage might help find a clue. Hmm. Can, you know... Can something not make me say insane in this game? It's still twitching. <laughs> I don't understand. Littered with bloody gauze and pools of unidentifiable body fluids, the operating table would give the hell. Yeah, we've read that one before. Let's see. Clutter litters the top of the cabinet, but the doors are locked. Obviously, this thing requires some sort of manipulation. A little applied mechanics is all it takes. And we got some bullets. Can I? Can I? Thank you. A note on the table reads, Keep all cell lights extinguished until the boiler is repaired. Corridor lights must remain on in case of emergency. Tell any patients who complains in the dark of the dogs that the situation is temporary. Well, this is based off a uh, tabletop game, and I think the sanity thing is a major factor in it. Whew! A row of pill bottles line the shelf. One is marked dosage. One tablet daily to soothe anxiety. You consider taking one yourself. Can I have like three or four of them, please? Like eight, maybe? Nine, ten, twenty? 30, 40, 50. Bring that sanity all the way up. Surgical instruments crusted with blood and other organic material crowd this disgusting sink. 
Even a glance at the mess is enough to turn your stomach, but you spot something. Oh, baby. Buddy, give me insanity now. Eyes wide, a doctor stares at you as if realizing he's been spotted while trying to hide. His lips tremble and he cowers away from you. But a fright might loosen him up. Here, take this, he says, handing you a key. It's for the isolation ward. Afflexed to the key is a cardboard tag reading cells. This could come in handy. Ah, Dang it, he sent me into insanity. Thank you, game. It was based on the Call of Cthulhu tabletop. So you just as likely to lose a character by going... Okay, so it is based off the... Um, off the tables, the Cthulhu tabletop RPG. Okay, thank you. I was trying to figure out if that's what it is, but people kept telling me that the Arkham game is a completely different thing. I, I We want to do a tabletop run of Call of Cthulhu. That is something that's on the docket for um, RP, or for D&D um, &D night. We'll go this way. You know what? No, we won't. We're going to go this way first. Well, I've made a bad decision in my life. Can people stop driving me insane so often in this game? Got him. Oh, their defenses are boosted too. That's bad. You could take on the world. He sure as hell can't. Oh shit, we need to heal. Oh shit, we need to heal. Oh shit, he's gonna die. Oh, never mind. Oh good, you're the magic asshole. Mythos effect. Wicked pi 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 pilfer. Fuck. Pocket fills lighter elves. Son of- Carl's a dick. I'm just saying. Damn, that thing does some damage. Of course you don't have an healing item. That would be stupid. Are you... He's right there, and you have a pipe. Come on, girl. Smack him in the face. There you go. <laughs> to be fair, I'm using a meat cleaver. That's gonna leave some damage. Hey, Beardy. I'm insane! No! Oh, God. Oh god, no. What do you do? Oh no. Oh god, no. What's going on? Trauma occurred. Cigarette addiction. What you need is a good smoke to calm your nerves. Where did you put that pack? Oh, there's one already in your hand. Medium urge to smoke a cigarette. Um. 
Okay, thank you. I don't fully understand this game sometimes. I didn't know you smoke. I didn't think you smoked cigarettes. Okay, now you're gonna walk over here and you're gonna smack the shit out of him with a pipe. Uh. There you go. You try. Oh, we smacked him so hard he's blind. Please stop doing that. Oh, I broke my gun. No. Oh, okay. But you smoked other things. Well, that happened. A well-built cabinet locked shut. And uns... Okay. Of course! Of course! Oh. Ooh. Okay, let's see. What do we want to use? Various papers were scattered across the doctor's desk. There's no obvious rhyme or reason for their order. Among the disorganized papers, you find a file on Albert Hatcher. 5th of February, 1926. Patient A. Hatcher admitted to asylum. Initial assessment determines he is to be placed in the psychiatric ward, psychosis ward. Uh, 6th of February, 1926. Patient proves increasingly violent. Orderlies struggle to control him. Patient transferred to isolation cell until behavior improves. Let's see. Upon a routine inspection, cell discovered in disarray. Patient not immediately visible. He attacked from hiding. And he has undergone some radical physical transformation. I can hardly bring myself to write these words. Such a thing should be medically impossible, but I saw it with my own eyes. I withdrew at once, leaving the orderlies to secure the poor, poor Mr. Hatcher. And yet, I can still feel it. I can hear the sound, know the signal, the call. Patient, orderly, doctors, we're all the same. We must heed the call. These notes indicate the creature is actually Albert Hatcher, the gravekeeper. How is that possible? I've never even read of a disease that could cause such a radical physical transformation. Was there a contamination? Or is this a natural process in the creature's life cycle? I guess we won't be getting any answers from the Gravekeeper. Okay. You're listening, you're playing Biomutant listening to this. Well, I'm glad that these sync up for some reason. Pursuing this stack of books might turn up a lead. Closer look. Among the documents is a journal with an accompanying note indicating the book was confiscated from patient O'Bannon. And inside you read, They have the wrong man, but I can't think straight long enough to convince them of it. I woke up in a cell. The police addressed me as Danny O'Brien, but that's not my name. Eventually, they turned me over to a doctor who sent me here to the madhouse. They tell me I've got something called identity disorder. They think I created a false personality to protect myself. The nurses act like I'm lying, but I swear I'm not. How long are they gonna keep me in here? The note reads, warning, boilers are set to low power due to a pressure malfunction. Please refrain from using excessive heat and electric electricity, including but not limited to steam baths, electroshock therapy, and cell lights. That's right, this was the time when they were doing that kind of stuff. Shocky, shocky. <laughs> Son of a fuck. 
A patient sits in this room, stricken with panic while staring at something crouched on the floor beside him. You were expecting something more terrifying. Your nerves are frayed from being in the asylum. You feel a sense of relief. You have found something new. I am not doing another sanity check. Screw that noise. He can just sit there insane. He's fine. The door to a patient's cell. It's locked, but you can't see the mecha mechanism nearby. It's just as well. You don't need anything from there. Yeah, God forbid there be a patient locked in there. Oh, let's face it. What the fuck do we care anymore? What's oh! that noise behind us? Damn it, it's back. No! It sounds like the creature. Is it following us? Is it hunting us? Fascinating. It is intelligent enough to stalk prey. So is my dog, but it doesn't mean I want it to stalk me. Son of a monkey. I don't want to deal with this. Oh, God. You remember that lovely time on the beach when the sun was shining. Oh, your mind wandered again. Oh, she got a cigarette. She's fine. Oh, it's ruined. Shit. Don't care. She's gonna go insane next. She kind of looks like Gillian Anderson. Look at her face in the portrait. Come and get it, big boy. I'm gonna shove a meat cleaver up your ass. He's, he's thinking. You feel the awful gaze of the great old ones on you. Despair gnaws at your remaining sanity. Of course it's a fucking sanity check. Oh, of course. <laughs> Trauma acquired. Self mutilation. Stab them wrists. Yes, you do. You absolutely deserve it. Shoot you in the face. He's gonna come eat somebody's butt. Why did you have to stun the guy with the meat cleaver? How are you immune to getting smacked in the face? I don't care if that heals him one. No, I don't want that. I want meat cleaver. He's gonna get it right where it hurts. I mean, kind of. Picking on the retarded child yet? Is that what we've become? Get over here and help us. Uh, can I not get over there because everybody else is in the way? What's going on? Oh, 
you're gonna make me do this shit so I can get him again. Hit him! Hit him! Oh! Fuck you, game. Oh, that I can do. This could have been avoided with therapy. No, no, it literally couldn't have, but thanks, lady. Door to the isolation cell. Oh, I don't like this. Why you don't piss off your DM? Why are we now fighting the Joker? You kind of look like it from there. I'm not using magic. I already know what's gonna happen if I do. Don't walk past me. He's having a, he's he's having a great day. He's, and he's blind. God, do I just smack them in the fucking? Is that what I'm doing? Am I smacking him? Oh no. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Now it's a war. You wanna play that game? You can play that game. Dude, you've been talking about that like nonstop. <laughs> calm down, man. Congrats, but calm down. He did. Please don't shoot me. I said please. <laughs> At least he said he's sorry. It's not gonna help him, mind you. You can miss a shot in this game, yes. You don't want to! <laughs> Just... damn. He did. You... yeah. Sanity check. Unlike the others you discover in this ward, this cup, this corpse, is that of a woman. Did she sneak in here for a visit? Or did the doctor simply not notice that she was a woman? Ow. That thought gives you a dark chuckle. A visual study, let's see. 
From the bo really from the body you take a note that reads thirty four two. <laughs> Upon the desk lies a patient's file. Unfortunately, the handwriting is all is all illegible. Oh, of course. <sighs> An asylum patient stands before you, initially calm. I've accepted my fate, he says. In Arkham Asylum, death comes before any cure. His eyes grow wild and he pulls at his hair. My only regret is that my, my recipe, my life's work, shall die with me. No one has proven worthy of it. It shall die. Perhaps it's best to proceed with a social nicety? The agitated madman gazes into your eyes, as if weighing the decision. Yes, he says, you are worthy. He leans close and whispers, two parts of the clearest rum, one part dry vermouth, and a dash of orange liqueur. A hiccup escapes his mouth, and he adds, one, I tended a bar before prohibition. He giggles before mumbling to himself and leaving you oddly thirsty. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't kick me. There we go. <laughs> A note scratched on the wall. What am I doing here? Who is this O'Banion? I'm sure that's not me, but I've been confused. Could they be right? So this was O'Banion's cell. Oh, and this is, this is lovely. Oh, fucking course. Oh, you're fine, though. The nape of your neck tingles, and all the fine hairs in your arms rise as you see the es esoteric symbols covering the walls and floor. They are written in blood, and while you do not understand the language, the words look somehow familiar. Is this a patient's room? What happened to this place? Nothing human could have caused so much damage. Just look at what it did. No orderlies could hope to restrain it. A person made this writing. Did the creature drag him away? If not... This symbol on the floor looks familiar. It's the same symbol we saw in the professor's office. What a curious development. If a patient told me this, I would suspect he was delusional. Albert Hatcher, the Gravekeeper, has transformed into this abomination? I can't believe that monster used to be human. Science is full of phenomena that appear miraculous, even to trained scientists. This is something new. Something worthy of study. Once circumstances become less life-endangering, naturally. You're just a voice in our head, shut up. It's hard to believe, but the creature did look like a human being that had been taken over by, I don't know, some kind of controlling parasite? I'm beginning to suspect that creature is the source of the mental disturbance among the patients. I myself can feel a pressure in my mind. If we stay here too long, I fear it might take over our actions also. Our weapons were useless against the thing. Even all the asylum staff haven't been able to repel the creature. I don't think we stand a chance against this abomination. You're right. We should block the door and get far away from here. Well, I think with that we're gonna call it. So, can someone put the- wait a minute, Shiny. There is so m let's see, sometimes a touch reveals more. Looking inside, you find, thank God. Can somebody put the numbers that we found in the black, um, uh, black watch in the Discord so we don't forget it? Which, by the way, if you haven't joined the Discord, I'll put a link up after I'm done. 
but I think we'll continue this more maybe on Friday, if not on Sunday during Spooky Sunday, but I do really, really enjoy this game. Sorry that happened with Biomutant. I'm going to do some tests after the stream to figure out what happened, but maybe it turned out to be the best because we get to play some more Arkham. So I will see you guys on Friday because I'll be doing a stream over on Plexstorm tomorrow for patrons. So thank you all for joining me, and I hope you guys have an awesome night. Bye. Good night.